Hello there, my friends. Welcome to this epic travel video as we explore the incredible country of Algeria. From the bustling streets of Algiers to the sweeping sands of the Sahara, get ready to join me on an adventure of a lifetime. We'll be diving into this fascinating destination's culture, history, and natural beauty. So buckle up and let's get this journey started. Let's begin our adventure with a journey from Lisbon to Algiers, the vibrant capital city of Algeria. Upon arrival, we will be greeted by the warm and welcoming Algerian people, who are renowned for their heartfelt hospitality and genuine kindness. For the next few days, Algiers, the bustling city that never sleeps, will be our playground. As we immerse ourselves in its dynamic energy and explore its rich cultural heritage, we will discover hidden gems and iconic landmarks that will take our breath away. One of our first stops was at the Grand Post Office, also known as the Grand Poste d'Alger. This stunning building, which was constructed in 1910 during the French colonial period, features a beautiful blend of Moorish and French architectural styles. Next, we visited Martyrs Square, a significant landmark in the city that honors the memory of those who fought for Algeria's independence from France. The square features a towering statue of a man holding a baby, symbolizing the country's rebirth and hope for the future. We then visited the Great Mosque of Algiers, which is one of the largest mosques in Africa and can accommodate up to 120,000 worshippers. The mosque's stunning white marble facade and intricate geometric patterns are simply breathtaking. Another mosque we visited was the Kechawa Mosque, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that was originally built in the 17th century. This mosque has undergone several transformations throughout history and features a unique blend of Ottoman, Byzantine, and Andalusian architectural styles. We also visited the Cathedral of Notre Dame d'Afrique, a beautiful Catholic church built in 1872. The church's interior is stunning, with intricate stained glass windows and a gorgeous altar. The church offers a beautiful view of the city and the Mediterranean Sea. Our next stop was the Kasbah, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that dates back to the 17th century. The Kasbah is a maze of narrow streets, winding alleys, and stunning whitewashed buildings. The area is also home to several museums and historical landmarks, including the Palace of the Day, which served as the residence of the Ottoman rulers in Algiers. Finally, we visited the Jardin d'Essay du Hama, a beautiful botanical garden that offers stunning views of the city and the Mediterranean Sea. The garden is home to over 3,000 plant species and features several walking paths, fountains, and ponds. The garden also offers a beautiful view of the Martyrs' Memorial, which commemorates those who died in the Algerian War of Independence. Overall, our two-day trip to Algiers was an unforgettable experience, and we highly recommend visiting this beautiful city if you have the opportunity. The next morning, we caught a flight from Alger Airport to Gardaia, our second destination on this trip. Gardaia is located 600 km south of Alger and is known for its unique architecture and culture. The city is divided into several districts, each with its own mosque, market, and fortress-like structures known as kasbahs. It's important to note that all tourists arriving at the Gardaia airport are currently escorted by Algerian police to their hotels. Although it may seem like an administrative process, the officers involved are incredibly friendly, so there's no need to worry. Upon arrival, travelers will need to hire a taxi to take them to their hotel, with the police vehicle leading the way as an escort. The same process applies when leaving Gardaia, with the taxi and police vehicle departing from the hotel where we stayed. During my visit to Gardaia, I was captivated by the city's unique architecture and rich cultural heritage. One of the must-see sites in Gardaia is the Casbah de Gardaia, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that consists of a fortified complex made up of traditional adobe homes that have been inhabited for centuries. The Kasbah is a prime example of the unique Saharan architecture found in the region and is a true wonder to behold. Another highlight of my visit to Gardaia was the Central Market, a bustling hub of commerce where vendors sell everything from spices to handcrafted textiles. The market is a must-visit for anyone interested in traditional North African crafts and culture.
The Mesquita de Sidi Ibrahim is another significant site in Gardaia. This mosque, built in the 11th century, is known for its stunning architecture and intricate tile work. It's one of the oldest and most important mosques in Gardaia, and a visit to this site is a must for anyone interested in Islamic architecture and history. Beyond these iconic sites, Gardaia is also home to several other notable landmarks, such as the tomb of the Saint Moulay Ilias and the Museum of Popular Arts and Traditions. The tomb of the Saint Moulay Ilias is a revered pilgrimage site for locals, while the Museum of Popular Arts and Traditions showcases the unique culture and history of the region. Overall, a visit to Gardaia is an unforgettable experience that offers a glimpse into a way of life that has remained largely unchanged for centuries. Whether you're interested in history and architecture, or simply immersing yourself in a new and fascinating culture, Gardaia has something to offer everyone. On the following day, we traveled to the nearby city of Beni Isquen, another important center of Saharan culture. One of the main points of interest in Beni Isquen is the Ksur, a fortified city within a city that has been inhabited since the 11th century. The Ksur is made up of a series of narrow alleyways and courtyards that are home to traditional adobe homes and mosques. It's a truly unique and awe-inspiring place that offers a glimpse into a way of life that has remained largely unchanged for centuries. Another notable site in Beni Isquen is the traditional market, where locals gather to buy and sell goods. The market is known for its vibrant atmosphere and is a great place to experience the local culture firsthand. Visitors can sample local delicacies, purchase traditional crafts, and interact with friendly locals. Beni Isquen offers a unique cultural experience with stunning architecture, lively markets, and a rich history, a must-see in Algeria. On the same night, we caught a flight from Gardaia Airport to Constantine, our final destination on this trip. Constantine is located 500 kilometers north away from Gardaia, just over an hour's flight. The purpose of visiting Constantine was not only to explore the city, but also to visit the Roman site of Jamila. We stayed at the Novotel Constantine, which is located near the interesting closed market, just across Benachur Square and Bin Nasser Bashir Park. Martyrs Square, and our favorite cafe for morning coffee were also nearby. On the opposite side, you can find the central post office and the theater regional de Constantine. This area is also the most convenient for currency exchange. As we made our way toward the Sidi Masid Bridge, we walked along the lively and bustling Didouche Murad Street. The street was filled with all sorts of activity and energy, making it a fascinating sight to see. We took the opportunity to observe the bustling atmosphere of this city, taking in all the sights and sounds around us. In the same area, we also visited the Palais du Bay and the Sidi Lakdar Mosque. The Palais du Bay is a beautiful historic palace that was once home to the local rulers, and it is now open to visitors who want to explore its stunning architecture and rich history. The Sidi Lakdar Mosque, on the other hand, is a beautiful religious building that has been standing in the heart of Constantine for centuries, attracting visitors from all over the world. After walking along the bustling Didouche Murad Street, we finally arrived at the magnificent Sidi Masid Bridge. The bridge is an impressive piece of architecture, standing tall and proud over the River Rumel, offering stunning panoramic views of the city and the surrounding landscape. We took our time admiring the bridge, taking in all its details and marveling at its grandeur. We couldn't resist taking some photos to capture the moment and share it with our friends and family back home. After exploring the bridge, we decided to take a stroll and enjoy the views of Mount Sidi Masid. The hill is a popular spot for tourists and locals alike, offering breathtaking views of the city and its surroundings. We also visited the Monument Osmor, a war memorial that honors the fallen soldiers who fought for their country's freedom. 
In addition to the city Masid Bridge, we also visited other bridges, including the Mela Slimane Bridge and City Rashed Bridge. The Mela Slimane Bridge, also known as the New Bridge, is a modern cable-stayed bridge that connects the east and west sides of the city. It is an impressive structure that spans the Rumel River and offers spectacular views of the city. The Sidi Rashed Bridge is another historic bridge that spans the Rumel River. It was built in the 19th century during the French colonial period and is a beautiful example of colonial architecture. Visiting these bridges was a fascinating experience as we were able to witness the different architectural styles and historical significance of each one. We also enjoyed the beautiful views of the river and the city from these bridges. During one of our days in Constantine, we decided to take a cultural visit to the ancient Roman city of Jamila. We hired a taxi to take us there, and the journey took approximately one hour and 30 minutes to cover the distance of around 80 kilometers that separated the two locations. Upon our arrival at Jamila, we were struck by the grandeur of the Arch of Caracalla and the Temple of Gens Septimia. Both of these historical sites were incredibly well preserved and offered a glimpse into the Roman Empire's architectural prowess. The Arch of Caracalla was built in the 3rd century AD and served as a triumphal arch to commemorate Emperor Caracalla's visit to the region. The Temple of Gens Septimia was dedicated to the local gods and goddesses and was constructed during the 1st century AD. Its intricate carvings and detailed decorations were truly awe-inspiring. As we made our way through the site, we also visited the Roman Theater, which was another magnificent example of ancient architecture. The theater could seat over 3,000 people and was used for various performances and events during the Roman Empire. The Cardo Maximus Road, a main thoroughfare in the ancient city, was also a sight to behold. It was lined with columns and arches, and we could easily imagine the frenzy and excitement of daily life during Roman times. To deepen our understanding of the history and culture of Jamila, we visited the Jamila Museum, which housed a wide variety of artifacts and exhibits from the site's past. We were particularly interested in the mosaics and sculptures on display, which showcased the skill and artistry of the ancient people who lived and worked in Jamila. After a half day of exploration, we returned to Constantine, feeling enriched and grateful for the opportunity to experience such a unique and fascinating place. We were aware that our journey to Algeria was only the start of our adventure, and we were eager to discover more of this amazing country, such as the Great Ergs and the Hagar Mountains in Taman Rasset, which we plan to visit in the future. Thank you for joining us on this unforgettable journey through Algeria. We hope that our adventures have inspired you to explore this beautiful country for yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting travel documentaries. Until next time, happy travels.